There is a lot of speculation that the Sages of Hyrule will be returning in Tears of the Kingdom based on some of the tiers that we've been shown on main characters. But if this is the case and this tells us who the Sages are going to be, why does Ganon have one as well on his forehead? I have a few theories around these tiers and how they relate to the Sages coming back into Hyrule. So let's get into it. To start this, I want to say that I haven't watched any of the leaks, and especially when it's coming to the date of this recording, May 1st, 2023, when a lot of the actual game footage and part of the game story is being leaked. I haven't looked at any of this as I'm recording this video, but now that you know all this, let's get into this theory without any leaks in it. If you aren't super familiar with who the Sages of Hyrule are, I'll give you a quick background and how I think this is related to what we now see in Tears inside of Tears of the Kingdom. I'm going to use Ocarina of Time for this theory just to give a good idea of what I'm talking about and give you guys something you can research on your own if you would like. In Ocarina of Time, we know there are seven sages that are awoken from a slumber to help fight off the evil that is Ganon. Six of these sages have medallions that they then give to Link after he helps defeat the evil inside of their temples. Link has additional power each time he gets one of these medallions, and in the end, all six of these medallions help Ganon become defeated and locked away. Essentially, these different sages have these different colored medallions based on where they are in Hyrule, just to give an idea of the different clans, different people that Link helps to help fight off Ganon at the end of Ocarina of Time. Now we see this same color scheme happening in Tears of the Kingdom, especially in recent trailers, but with a different item. There's no longer medallions that are being used, but there's these tear-shaped stones, I'm assuming, that are possessed by people who help Link in his different fights throughout Hyrule. Each of these are kind of related to different sages, and that's what I'm basing this theory off of. Now the color scheme is important because each tier or medallion, depending on which game we're talking about, represents the protector of that region and in that region is very different compared to other ones such as death mountain is always going to be associated with fire and lava now these medallions are going to be associated with that person because that's who represents that area and that protector of that area which in turn is the sage of fire for the example of death mountain we also know that these sages are only turned into these sages once they are awakened during a period of time that they're required. We saw something similar to this, but not exactly in Breath of the Wild with the Divine Beasts. So for whatever reason, in Tears of the Kingdom, we're introduced to these tiers on main characters, but not in Breath of the Wild, with the previous protectors with the Divine Beasts. Could the resurrection of Ganon be the triggering event that was needed to have these protectors, these new sages, be emerged from their slumber and these descendants? It's absolutely a possibility, but for whatever reason, we see these tiers playing a focal point on the main characters, helping Link in his fight. Between the official trailers and the new artwork for the characters, we can confirm six different tiers. Five are on characters that we already know. One is kind of a confirmation, but not a full confirmation. We know that we have Zelda, Riju, Sidon, Tullin, and Ganon, and somebody else that I'm going to call the Zonai Leader. Zelda is shown multiple times holding what seems to be the light tier in her hands, and a few times throughout the trailer we can also see ancient Zelda holding it as well. Now we don't know if they're the same person, different person, or ancestors of each other, we just don't know, but we can confirm that our Zelda, the current time Zelda, has the light tier. Now Riju, Sidon, and Tullin also are shown with their tears, but very briefly, especially when you compare them to Zelda. Riju has them in her earrings, and it looks like there's only one. I think there might be two. It's really hard to tell with how fast the clip with her and the earrings are, and also because it's really pixely when you zoom in, but she is absolutely having at least one tear, maybe two, inside of her earring, so we'll count that as one. Sidon's tear might be the easiest one to see out of all three of them, especially because it's on his left hand, very bright blue very hard to miss and they kind of zoom in on it during the trailer as well Tullin's deer is also very easy to see once you pause the trailer at the right point but you can absolutely tell it's on his bow it is green and yellow so another easy one to identify there next we can go to our mystery person who i'm calling the zonai leader and when he's talking to zelda his right hand on her shoulder has something that shines just like the other tears do but it doesn't look the exact same way we're going to assume that this person who is helping zelda has protected the tear on the back of their hand 
This brings us to Ganon, who is shown with the red tear on his forehead in both official artwork and in the trailer where he's raging surrounded by what looks like malice. Now you can assume that the red tear would originally be associated with the Gorons since they live in Death Mountain surrounded by lava and have always been associated with the color red. But we don't see anything about a named Goron in this yet. We see Yanobo isn't anywhere in the official trailers or official artwork. We don't know what's going on with them yet, but for some reason Ganon has the red tear and nothing is even related to the Gorons with these tears. Not yet at least. There's a lot of speculation on how Ganon actually got this tear from he already had the tear and is originally a sage. He stole it from Yanobo and the Gorons, took over Death Mountain and stole it from them. There's a lot of different ideas that could possibly link Ganon to the tear that he has on his forehead but nonetheless there is a fire tear, a red tear, so that absolutely confirms at least one sage in the game. No matter the reason, we still have a grand total of six unique items, just like Ocarina of Time, six medallions, six tiers, and tiers of the kingdom. That seems like a pretty round number when it comes to the sages, if you ask me. However, this does leave out the seventh sage, which is usually called the leader of the sages, and they also don't have a medallion, which is what Zelda was in Ocarina of Time. She was the leader of these sages. However, Zelda this time around does have a tear, which kind of takes her out of the running for the leader, but also begs the question, who would end up being the leader of the sages? To bring an idea out of left field, I think the leader for these sages in Tears of the Kingdom can actually end up being Link. Now we obviously don't have confirmation that Link has a tier yet, he could end up getting one. It's not saying that it's impossible, but there's no confirmation yet. He fights along the other sages in the different trailers, we know he's a leader, has shown it multiple times, and I think it would be a nice plot twist if he did end up becoming the leader of the sages in this game. Now, as always, this is all speculation. A bunch of different theories combined into one that kind of points to the fact that the Sages of Hyrule could really be returning in Tears of the Kingdom after a 10 year hiatus. From what I can tell, and please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but the last time we saw any relation to the Sages was in A Link Between Worlds. But someone can correct me in the comments around this. But if that is true, it has been 10 years since we had any relation to some form of the Sages of Hyrule, which I think it's about time they come back. But as always, guys, I want to know your thoughts and opinions on this theory. Do you think it's a little out of left field, like I said before? Do you want the sages to come back, or should they stay in history books like we've seen in the past, especially since we haven't seen them for 10 years? Also, what do you think is going to happen with the Gorons and Tears? There's a lot of different theories going on around it. I want to know your thoughts. I want to read them down in the comments down below. I appreciate you guys going through this video with me through this theory. If you like the video and the theory, hit the like button down below and I will see you guys on my next video.